So it's die cast theme at the minute. I've been looking to uh, populate the future layout with a few trucks and things. Um, not much luck on smaller commercial vans and trucks and cars at the minute. I think uh, to be a bit more selective with vehicles. I have got a box I did buy locally, which I don't think I've ever been through. A lot of it is sort of you know 50s and 40s cars, which uh, not completely appropriate for the time period I'm going for although I'm not cast in stone but as you can see this one is uh, one I managed to pick up it's a Lido one Ken Thomas local to me ish wouldn't want to walk there but um, yeah it's about 25 minute drive used to go past it every day when I worked in Peterborough my brother-in-law used to uh, be the chef in the calf they owned for any of truckers that went down the 47 past Guyon and went into that truck stop calf back in the uh, uh, earlier 80s. So I thought that would be a little bit of a heart back to a local truck you'd see going around. Um, and as you know, I'm after Royal Mail Parcel Force, <coughs> so it's the same theme. Uh, Obviously they've only got a license for Volvo I guess, because everything's Volvo. So we got a parcel force truck from, that was from one seller. These four here were from another one. They did have another couple but um, I didn't really fancy the other ones. But they were four ninety nine, and for some reason that one was three ninety nine. But some people are asking £10 for that one but... Obviously they ain't selling them. So we went for a parcel force one. So you do get opening doors on them. You can detach the trailer and there is a very basic set of legs. <coughs> and fairly basic, obviously no mirrors, no wipers. I suppose you could add them on or maybe someone 3D prints them. I have seen some bits on eBay that uh, you can go on. I don't think I'm overly worried really for where they'll be seen. It's not a sort of detail you're going to see. They're a very basic one. They don't run very well, some of them. But, um, you know, they're cheap and cheerful, do what they uh, need to do. Which is just look like a lorry. But they were sort of this week's bargain, 23 quid. I think that lot cost me with the postage, and that one was about 11, I think. Well, is that a bargain or not? eBay says it sold for 35 pounds. No, 10 pounds cheaper. Never trust what eBay says as their selling price. So let's have a look at what we got. And then we come to this little fella. One of the uh, stalwarts of the Hornby range along with the Smoky Joes. If it wasn't one of them it was one of these in various guises. A little another 040. A little DC only job. So it will never see active service on my layout. And I do happen to have a few other similar type locos that I've picked up over the years or stuff that I've had from my lad's old sets when he was a nipper. But talking of nippers, I received this from Amazon a few months ago. So yeah, Mr Newlin's going to be grandad. So, there might be a train set in someone's future, because apparently it's going to be a boy. And, uh, obviously, it is obligatory that they are assimilated into the railway world. And they're not allowed to touch Grandad's expensive locomotives. Only these sort of things. <laughs> so it might find a use in a few years' time. Who knows? Well, here it is all in the flesh, so to speak. Now, the description did mention that the odd hook was missing and, the, you know, sort of things you can expect with uh, 
old used items. Now my eye was taken to this listing because I'm after back when VGA wagons which seem to be going for stupid money at the minute. You won't get one for less than £20. I used to pay 15 with probably postage on top. They were getting towards £20. Now people seem to think they're worth £20 to £30. I've even seen one for more than that. I do have a boxed EWS version. If anyone wants to swap it for a rail freight version, it is boxed in mint condition. And obviously EWS didn't exist in my time frame. So I guess you could say that in its own entirety is worth 15, 20 pounds of the 25 pounds I paid for the entire lot. And it's all intact. Sometimes those couplings do fall out, but what you can do, rather than don't glue them in and bugger it up, because when that little tiny piece of plastic snaps your stuff, if they start dropping out, just get a little piece of paper and pack it in there, push it in and tear it off and use it as a shim. It just gives it a little bit more friction to hold in. And if it does snap, you can still get it out with a pair of pliers. But they're a nice little weighty. This is looking like the weathered version. So that was sort of my prime target with this job lot. But obviously, too much money for that. So luckily, as I'm modelling two time periods, you know, these are a five or a pop normally. Four or five pounds. Um, they put a fair bit of... Instead of, I don't think they've put a false bottom in this and then they've filled the whole thing up and then glued because it weighs a ton so I'll probably have to soak that in water and um, scrape that all out. But I think this one, has it got one hook? No, it's got one buffer missing. I've got loads of cast ones ready to uh, retrofit. did find one of the axle slightly worn and there is a little bit they do tend to stick out on these model variants that won't be done so I might want another axle in there because it is worn away and we have another one there this one's just got a foam insert with a little bit stuck to the top that one is all intact I think and uh, a Siphon G wagon. I've got some of the Pale Forks ones. These are a Lima wagon. Again, it all appears intact, I think, apart from one coupling hook missing. But they're easy enough to buy a pack of them. I might have some. I know that some have the little hoop that locks in face down, some face up, so they're not always compatible. So I'll probably keep this one as well. And another tanker. <laughs> I don't know how many of these I've got. The Shell, Texaco, BP ones. Um, <clears throat> that's all there. I'm pretty sure one had a hook snap off of it. Somewhere along the line. Yeah. The ends broke off, but that is a, a clipping job, so easy fix. So yeah, another tanker. These make five quid all day long. And uh, a bogey bolster wagon. This is an earlier one, as it's got the riveted fitting and not the clipping one. But again, it's all intact. Well, I just went to change that hook and... Yeah, so it's bloody law, isn't it? I've got these crap laser cut ones. Which I've got the short, sharp angle there, which causes a bit of a problem with some because it hooks too tight. And as you can see, another problem I've had with these is you can open that up a little bit, but that's nowhere near the factory oh, specification. Purchase this week 3D pin printer poly photo polymer resin water washable because I picked up one of these a Mars 3 3D printer 
So it's the uh, not the latest iteration. I think there's a Mars Pro or something. I don't know what the difference is. There's not much difference. I think they made some improvements, but some of the earlier versions had those improvements anyway. But um, it was second hand and a bit of a bargain even though it was second hand it cost me 80, 88 pounds which they're normally making 120 to 160 second hand but it sort of you know it ended daytime when everyone's at work so it was to my advantage but obviously being second hand it hasn't come with the various bits that you get with it with new nothing major like you'd you don't get the tool kit which is basically some allen keys to centre the base of the build plate. I didn't get the USB stick with the software on which you can download off of the company site. I did get the power brick but I didn't get the three pin mains plug that goes in that but again it's just a stock computer one. Um, so basically I'm now learning all the software uh, the G2 box software that you have to put the files in so lots of YouTube videos because there's some stuff just the information doesn't give you simple little things that probably someone used to dealing with it takes for granted but actually telling the software what printer you're using um, you know that's not straightforward well it probably is to some people but you know, it doesn't, you know, you don't hover over the mouse and it tells you what it is. It's another one of these programs where it's more based on symbols and you're supposed to guess what the bloody hell they are. But um, I'll figure that bit out. So we've told the printer it's a Mars. And uh, the next thing to do is download some free trial software and print some bits off. Some railway bits off of Thingiverse. So it'll be a bit of trial and error. So I bought the washable version of the um, photo resin simply because obviously I'm not geared up with a cleaning tank and bits and pieces with isoprol isoprol alcohol although I have got some down the back there but that was bought for um, cleaning airbrush bits and bobs so I've gone for a washable one to start with just to see I just don't want to spend too much money in case the machine's faulty and I have to send it back so, I will keep you posted on 3D developments. <laughs>